We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and binds up our wounds. Welcome to the Parish of Bridport's online service. I hope that you are well and we pray that God will bless you this morning as we meet with him to worship him in spirit and in truth. Today we have Peter Clark um, speaking to us and so we hope that you will be blessed by Peter's message. So let us pray. Lord God, your son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, 
that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, make us aware of your coming to us. Make us sensitive to your presence and alert to your call, that we may know that we dwell in you and you in us, and that we may give ourselves to you in love and service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Luke 12, uh, 32 to 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves when the master finds them alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. I once joked off-handedly to a student minister allocated to me, a bit like having a curate, that in ministry a good mantra would be, in all things prepare, in all things pray, and when necessary, wing it. And all things prepare? Well, like many people, I have a bit of a problem if I'm described with the term control freak, primarily because both the words control and freak have significant negative connotations. But the truth is, I do like to be organised. When the carefully arranged plans work slickly, I am delightfully fulfilled and I absolutely hate it when the organisation of something starts to unravel. I turned up, for instance, recently for a funeral, nice and early, so I could plug in the laptop displaying the few pictures of the lovely gentleman whose life we were about to celebrate. And it worked pretty much first time. Then a family member said she had some more photos we could attach and I duly unplugged the laptop from the screen to facilitate the uh, upload and the computer crashed and hung unresponding for fully 10 minutes. To a control freak like me, I, uh, sorry, I mean, I mean the organised person, of course, it felt like an eternity. But we eventually got it sorted and and fully half an hour before the start of the service. Phew. In all things pray? Well, I argued to my student that if God wasn't at the centre, or at least a significant part of what we do, then frankly, we're not doing our job properly. And winging it? Well, there are times when things don't quite work out the way you had planned and you have to rely on experience and natural ability, possibly, to navigate yourself through the challenges and ensure you meet the goals that are set, sometimes by an unplanned and innovative way. 
But my experience is that where you depend solely on winging it, things will inevitably, and sometimes catastrophically, go wrong. So is that just for a minister in the church? As St Paul would say, by no means. It is the advice I would suggest for life in general. I haven't always been a minister. I had a past life in the NHS. And when I set up as a scrub nurse in theatres, I would try to ensure that I had all the correct instruments, sutures, etc. Plus several additional items just in case the operation didn't go quite as planned. And as this reading indicates, Jesus suggests being prepared as a vital element for all of us in the life of faith. He compares it to slaves or servants who are awaiting the return of the master of the house, just as Christians are awaiting Jesus' final return. And he praises those hard-working slaves who have stayed up late ready for when he finally arrives, as opposed to falling asleep on the job. Oh, but wait, look at what happens when he turns up eventually in the middle of the night. Does he sit at the table and demand they look after his needs? Not a bit of it. Not only is his arrival unexpected, but his behaviour is too. He gets those slaves to sit down at the table and he serves and feeds them. We prepare and live our lives in a way that God would wish us to do. And we care for others and we seek justice and peace for all. And we do so in anticipation that one day the kingdom will finally come. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord, we come to you for guidance. We pray for pilgrims and seekers, all who strive for a better world. We ask your blessing on all who are seeking to extend their vision, their sensitivities, or their horizon. We remember all who are seeking to live disciplined lives, all who are new to the faith, all who are learning of you. Lord, guide all who in the church are leaders and teachers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have built up our world. We pray for builders and architects, for city planners and members of government, for genetic engineers and all research workers. Lord, give us the wisdom to build on firm foundations. We ask your blessing upon all who live in poverty, those who live in squalid surroundings, all who live without much hope or vision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, those who today in Ukraine are fearful or worried. Remember, Lord, those whose minds are darkened and disturbed by war. Remember, Lord, those who are suffering in silence and those whose bodies are disfigured by injury and pain. Remember, Lord, those who are trying to find courage to do the right thing. Remember, Lord, those who mourn, that they may be comforted by your peace. Remember, Lord, those who seek sanctuary. May they find a welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have extended our vision, who have increased our capacity to understand and to love. We pray for all who have shared their vision with us, for preachers and teachers, for artists and craftspeople, for those who have taught us in schools, for our friends and for our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose vision and abilities are restricted through illness or weakness. We remember all who are losing mobility or agility, all who suffer from stroke, especially those who find it hard to communicate and those who cannot look after themselves. And in a moment of silence, we pray for our friends and loved ones who are ill and need your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You, Lord, will bring us to the promised land where sorrow and pain are no more, but life and joy are everlasting. We come to you and seek your blessing upon our loved ones who have entered into the fullness of your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord is your hope and your peace. The Lord is your strength and your salvation. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Christ, as a light illume and guide me. Christ, as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ is a shield, Christ beside me on my left and on my right. God, the Creator, guide you in all that you do. Christ, the Saviour, protect you in every journey. The Spirit of God give you strength for each day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you wherever you may go, this day and always. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>